I would like to first thank uh, Development Group for hosting this interesting um, webinar, as well as Professor Arota for your kindness and, and inviting us so that we could have a chance to present our work in the past four years. So let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, my name is Lee. I'm currently uh, working in Shidai Group as a doctor student in Stockholm University. In the past four years, we are curious about uh, uh, the transcription factor and uh, doing the cell phase specification, especially in the developing mouse brain. We are particularly uh, interested in a transcription factor called PRM16. So um, the PRM16 has one PR domain and two zinc finger DNA binding domain and one uh, CTBP interaction motif. The previous study show it has histone lysine methyl transfer risk activity. It is also able to guide cell specification in multiple systems. And its mutation and deletion were also frequently found in human cancers. It is only until recently its functions in the nervous system has been revealed. So in the developing mouse brain, and especially in the neocortex, there are uh, nerve stem cells located in the apical surface. And they're also called the radial glia because of their radial fiber extended from the apical to basal membranes. And there are also intermediate progenitor cells located in the subbrain trichler zone, which is uh, basic, basal to the apical surface. And they are generated by radial glia and still maintain the capacity to divide. Besides, there are migrating neurons and the mature neurons in the developing cortex. Well, in the adult cerebral cortex, um, there are generally six laminar layers. Uh, the neurons in different layers are different from each other in terms of uh, cell morphology, cell density, as well as uh, the neural circuit they form. However, they are, they are all derived from the radial glia at different embryonic stage. So for example, the early born neurons will migrate first and to this place forming the layer six, while the late born neurons will migrate across this layer and locate on top of it. So that also applies to the neurons born at even later. Uh, so, the, so it is clear that the neural identity is tightly connected to their birth state. And our study starts from the finding that uh, PRM16 is highly expressed and specifically expressed in the radial glia. Um, as shown by the, I didn't time to show here, um, but it's similar to what uh, Tintin shows uh, for the expression of PEC6. So to examine the role, um, we use a previously reported gene trap line to globally remove PRM16. So this animal is called the now mutant. It can't survive after birth. So we can only check the, uh, the phenotypes before P0. As you can see, knocking out the PRM16 leads to a sulfate change, as shown here by the increased number of uh, middle layer neurons labeled in green, and the reduced number of uh, upper layer neurons labeled in red. And besides, there is also a migration defect shown by this ectopic uh, red cells. And to determine the intrinsic role, we use EMS1 CRE to specifically drive the deletion in, in the dorsal forebrains. So this animal is called conditional count, and they survive very well. So give us a chance to, to do the analysis uh, at a later stage. So for example, here from a coronal view of the brain hemisphere at postnatal day 15, you see that in the in the knockout, there's a big chunk of cells and in the between the white matter and the deep layer, uh, suggesting this is a migration defect. And if we take a closer look at this region I highlighted here, um, you could see a similar um, cell fate phenotype as we observe in a now mutant. So considering the fact that the PRM16 is specifically expressed in the radial glia, while the phenotype are observed in the daughter neurons. So we reason two possibility. So the first is that the, the transition of radial glia is impaired or delayed. And the second possibility is uh, the proliferation of the progenitor cell is changed. So to test the first possibility, we use a BRDU EDU labeling, combined with a layer specific marker CT2 to uh, examine the double positive cell number. So basically, uh, uh, we, we injected the BRDU in the, into the pregnant females with embryo at uh, around E14. And at this stage, the radial glia stopped producing CTP2 
positive cells. So that the neuron that are born on this date will be labeled as BR2 positive CP2 negative cells. So as expected, you can see in the control at the P5 brain, you see nearly low double positive cells in the cortex. However, in the conditional count, uh, also I, I forgot to mention that uh, the, the BRU positive cells and also successively migrate to the more superficial layer. While in the conditional count, you see an increasing number of double positive cells. So suggesting that uh, when you um, delete PRM16, the radio glare still produce uh, CT2 positive cells. So this indeed, it, there, is, there is a delay. And to test the second possibility, uh, we examine the number and proliferation of the, of the progenitor cells. So by using PAC6 to label the radio glare, you see there's no change. However, when you label the in intermediate progenitor cells with TBR2, you see a, a, a slightly reductions. And there are two reasons to, to explain this uh, phenotype. The first is that in the indirect neurogenesis is reduced. Well, the second one is that the INP proliferation itself is reduced. So to check that the first reasons, we, we performed the experiment by, by labeling EDU for 12 hours. And the uh, EDU labels the newly dividing cells. And together, we use k 67 to label the cells that still remain in the cell cycle. So when the neurons are born, they can either generate it by a radio glare directly called the direct neurogenesis. Alternatively, a radio glare can also first generate uh, INP and INP further divide into neurons. So the neurons that the, the neurons that are born from the direct neurogenesis at, 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 in this time window will will be labeled as EDU positive K167 negative. So by this ratio, you see that uh, in a in a control the normal the normal level of this neurogenesis is around this level, and there's an increase of neurogenesis in the conditional count. So this suggests that the indirect neurogenesis is reduced. So next, we, um, to directly confirm the compromised indirect neurogenesis, we performed the experiment called in utero electroporation, in which we basically um, um, injected plasmid into the ventricles of the embryos, and then we give an electric pulse so that the plasmid can enter the uh, progenitors in the apical surface and so that we can um, transiently manipulate the gene expression in the transfective cells and we can also measure the effect by the reporters such as GFP. So what we do here is that we did the surgeries in uh, E14 and we uh, do analysis 12, 24 hours later. So you can see that in, in, uh, in the controls when we injected the uh, empty vectors the GFP and TBR2 double positive cells uh, with this ratio, you see uh, indirect neurogenesis level at here. Well, when you knock down PRM16, this level drops. So clearly this provides uh, direct evidence that the, the indirect neurogenesis is, is reduced. And to check that the second reasons, we performed EDU labeling for just two hours and then we we checked the ratio of EDU TBR2 double positive cells. And clearly you could see that uh, in the control, the normal proliferation is around this level, while in the conditional count, there's clearly a reduction. So this means that uh, PRM16 knockdown also affected the INP proliferation. Then next question would be, how does PRM16 regulate temporal identity of radio glia? Since it is a transcription factor, so we perform chip seek. And I, uh, we identified two thousand, more than 2,000 peaks. Most of them are located in intergenic and tronic regions, suggesting that PRM16 mainly binds to the uh, distal regulatory element. We also performed a taxic and a chip and RNA to check the chromatin accessibility change and gene expression change. So first, when we plot chip seq with a taxic, you see that PRM16 mainly binds to the open chromatin. And the interesting is that when you remove PRM16, this region becomes even more open. And the further, when we further incorporate the, the taxic with the RNA-seq data, we find an interesting thing that for the region that gain accessibility, you also, the associated gene also shows an increase in, in the gene expression. So with all this global analysis, 
uh, we propose that, we propose that the PRM16 binds to the permiss permiss permissive enhancers and repress the gene expression by limiting the chromatin accessibility. When when PRM16 is gone, um, this chrom this chromatin region become open, then the associated genes uh, become derepressed. Next, since PRM16 promotes this transition from producing middle layer neuron to uh, upper layer neurons, so we wonder if it regulates a temporal gene, gene expression program. So to this end, we uh, reanalyze, uh, publish the single cell sequencing data um, so that we identify um, more than two, 120 genes and show a relatively higher expression at earlier stage, while there are around 250 genes showing a higher expression at later stage. And then we wonder what happened to these genes in our mutant. Then you see that as highlighted here, there are in total 25 genes show either upregulation or downregulation in our mutant. And then uh, we speculate that the PRM16 might repress those genes with a, a relatively higher expression at earlier stage so that it can establish uh, uh, is so it can establish a new gene expression program to um, facilitate the up, up layer neuron production and the migration. So that um, we focus on two genes with this pattern, uh, the CDKN1C and FRT3. So to validate the first uh, target, CDKN1C, which is a well-studied cell cycle inhibitor, we did the same experiment and we um, do the analysis as shown here. Um, with the control vectors, uh, you see that normally the proliferation of INP is around this level. But when you knock down PRM16, this level drops. And when you further knock down CDKN1C, you rescue this phenotype. So clearly this provides evidence that PRM16 regulates the pro proliferation of the upper layer neurons by repressing this cell cycle inhibitor. And to validate the second, uh, target FLRT3, which is a repulsive signal for neuron migration. We did the same experiment instead. We, we connect them at later, later stage so that we can observe the migration. As you can see in the control, the GFP positive cells um, indicate the migrating neurons. Well, when you knock down PRM16, you see the similar uh, phenotype of a migration defect uh, as you could see in the, in the conditional count. And when you further knock down FRT3, you rescue this phenotype. So this is also clearly show that PRM16 regulates this migration of up layer neurons by, by repressing the, this repulsive signal. So to summarize, uh, we propose that in the white, white type radioglia, PRM16 binds and repress a subset of genes um, so that it can facilitate the, the establish uh, a new gene expression program in this radio glare to produce and uh, to help the migration of this uh, upper layer neuron. However, when you remove PRM16, um, the, the entire gene expression program is uh, become masked so that you see the phenotype. So with all this, I'd like to thank all the people who are involved in this project. Uh, especially my supervisor Chi Dai, who put uh, extremely effort in this project from from the initial conception to uh, experiment design and the data analysis. I also like to thank our collaborator Brian and Jennifer, who provide us uh, bring samples at the very beginning when we had some troubles in getting an animal ASIC permit. We are also grateful for Jia Yu for her great work in the computational work. Uh, of course, the funding agency. So I will stop here. Uh, thanks for your attention. I'd like to take questions. Right. Um, thank you for for the for the nice talk. Um, we already have um, a question uh, or two in the chat. Um, so Alex is asking, in your knockdown uh, experiment, is it possible to quantify the level of the PDRM16 reduction to understand more about the threshold of PR PRDM16 would be required? Okay, so okay, if I, so if I uh, understand, uh, understand quite, uh, correctly, is that, uh, that I can uh, measure PRM16 by staining or by in situ? The answer is um, probably no, because I tried and I, I we we guess this is the problem of this knockdown 
which is which which can't complete completely ablate the, the the PRM16, and it is also dependent on the the efficiency of this electroporation. Great. I have a question. I was um, really intrigued by that perfectly sort of perfect layer of sub B two law expression. So low level of, of sub B two that develops in the mutant below layer six. If I'm reading your images correctly. So given that you also have uh, a, a, a reduced, a much reduced, but yet a layer of sub B two high cells above uh, the deep layers cor correctly positioned. How do you explain this other layer? Um, are these two classes of sub B2 positive cells different? Are we yeah. looking at upper layer neurons stuck there or are they different? Thank you for this great interest, uh, interesting questions. Um, actually, I, I in, in my opinion, they, they are actually, uh, even though we haven't checked, but I think they are, um, a little bit different in terms of their receptors they expressed. So you know that in even within the upper layer populations, there are subpopulations with uh, that express some subset of receptors um, that we uh, we found, which is um, kind of uh, connected to this UNC five receptors. So the reason why we also interested in, in validating this FLRT three genes is because. FLRT3 uh, has been shown to um, to uh, kind of rep, um, pro, pro, um, protect from the mic protect the migration of this um, UNC subset of upper layer upper layer neurons from migrating. So to answer your question, yes, uh, we think yeah, the, it would be, yeah, it would be cool to look at the identity of those yeah. cells. You yeah, know, like what are they? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here uh, from uh, Marco Antonio Capigne. He says, great talk. Do you have any idea of the output profile of radial glia cells with and without PRDM16? Hmm. Um, what do they make? <laughs> I'm not quite sure about these questions. Um, uh, what do you mean the output profile of radial glia cells? Um, I guess in like what what they correct me, Marco, if I'm interpreting this wrong. Um, but I would read it as what do they make? How much do they make? Like when they come out of the cell cycle. Um, oh yeah. Um, I think um, you mean the. I think you are asking the proliferation of uh, radio glia itself. So to answer these questions, and based on our findings, um, we haven't find the adding change in the number or in proliferating proliferation cells of the radio glia cells. And we also checked by pH uh, phos uh, phosphohistone uh, three, and that shows the proliferating cells in the in the conditional count. And we also don't see the any differences. Do they make, do they come out of the cell cycle more? And if so, um, no. ultimately, do they make the same number of progeny or not? It, it, maybe not, right? Based on your thinking about that cortical plate and. Yeah, talking about their progeny. Um, yeah, the output. I, I, INP would be their progeny and um, part of their progeny. So. What we found is that the, the there are more um, IMP exist the cell cycle exceed the cell cycles uh, instead of the radio glyph itself, and we also checked by this pH three staining, and we on, only see the differences in the um, reduction of pH three positive cells in the subventricular zone where uh, IMP locates instead of the apical surface where the radial glia uh, cells locate. Great. Are there any other questions for Lihi? Oh, yes. One more from uh, from Carol uh, Kaiser. He says, I noticed clustering to be one of the most upregulated genes in your RNA-C canal. This is an ubiquitous marker of CNS lipoproteins. 
have you looked at whether um sorry have you looked to whether secretion profile of rgc is affected sorry we haven't looked at that but this is a very interesting uh question that which can lead us to check more detail about uh, how PRM16 could regulate the internal properties of radioglia. I think that's a very interesting direction.